Hi, Rahana. Uh, you're with the Million uh, Climate Jobs Campaign. Can you give us a little bit of information about that? Well, the One Million Climate Jobs Campaign started in South Africa this year when uh, about 40 organizations got together and thought, well, we've got some very clear and obvious solutions that need to be implemented to deal with climate change, and that's renewable energy, transformation of agriculture, public transport, um, energy efficient housing and construction, a whole range of other, um, other measures as well, also measures to improve um, resilience, or enhance resilience of, of, of communities to, adaptation, uh, to, to climate change, which is basically adaptation. And we launched into a, a quite detailed desktop research um, uh, project, which showed us, in fact, that we have about three and a half million jobs that can be created. These are new jobs that can be created um, in dealing with climate change. And, and these, are, these are jobs in, in, um, in a wide range of, um, of activities. I mean, zero waste, for example, could create about 400,000 jobs if you have transformation in the, in the health sector so that you're um, improving health care, but also reducing um, uh, energy use in, in the health system, you could create about 1.3 million part-time jobs. Um, so this is, a, this is something that started relatively, relatively recently. What sort of reaction have you had from the South African government and from industry? We haven't taken it out yet, but certainly government is looking um, or is, is promoting um, job creation and, and, and job creation in the green economy as, as something that they, they are invested in. Um, I mean, South Africa has made... Uh, certainly some commitments to <laughs> to reducing its emissions um, but we also have a, a, an economy that, that's very energy intensive um, so so the sorts of changes that we need are significant I mean, we do need to shift away from um, energy intensive um, industries I mean mining um, minerals beneficiation um, and, and so on and, and that, that is going to require some, some, some quite big um, some quite big shifts so where the government is going to commit to that level of change in South Africa, that's not really showing yet, um, but certainly we think that those sorts of changes must be must be brought in um, and quite rapidly. Um, the, the one sort of very obvious area is uh, is in how we produce electricity. Um, more than 90% of our electricity is produced from coal. Um, and, and dirty coal, emissions intensive, uh, other other pollutants, um, very high impacts on health, on, on water quality, um, water quality from the mines, but also from um, you know from from the actual power stations, and and we believe that uh, we could be producing um, at least half our electricity in the next 10 years from renewable sources. We have a wealth of sun and wind resources that we can and should be using, um, and this would of course be um, effectively rolling out a, a whole new industry. We should be manufacturing the components here and this would create jobs, build skills, um, also um, not just jobs but, but good jobs, decent jobs. It sounds like a no-brainer, why hasn't this happened already, what sort of, why are you meeting any resistance? Ask government, ask industry. <laughs> But of course, I mean, South Africa's uh, industry for a long time has been based on mining and extractive industries like that. So uh, have they've been quite resistant, I would think, to, to change in, in the way they do business? There's, I mean, there's severe resistance uh, to, to changing, um, to shifting away from... Um um, from energy, uh, from the en energy intensive industries. Uh, we're effectively... Um it's actually quite complex. I mean, during during a passade, we ended up uh, w with a system where we produced enormous amounts amounts of very cheap electricity, which made it very attractive for um, companies to to basically ship raw materials in to smelt or process in some way, and then ship it out again for further beneficiation. Um, uh, no, they're not going to want to change that. The, 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 the mines, um, or the profit of the mines, partly depends on the cheap electricity that we produce. Um, and, and this was something that was set um, decades ago, um, when, when, when there was uh, basically a directive from, from governments then, or the government then, to um, for coal mining companies to deliver cheap coal so that the parastatal um, ASKIM, the electricity um, uh, parastatal, would be able to su uh, supply or produce cheap electricity and, and this of course um, led to um, uh, an expansion of mines, 
with huge profits that do not remain in the country, that do not benefit South Africa. The jobs that they provide are not good quality jobs. Um, so what would you consider a good quality job, for example? Well, the, the, the definition we're working to uh, with decent work, um, uh, work that uh, where, um, well, firstly, of course, good wages, good working conditions, um, jobs that enhance quality of life, jobs where uh, workers um, uh, can expand, can um, uh, can develop skills as they want to, can um, can grow in different directions. So, so, so there's room for, for, for growth, for education. There's there's um, uh, definitely an emphasis on quality of life outside of the of the working environment. Health, you know, good health care. In the U.S. and Europe and a lot of other countries now, we're seeing significant uh, unemployment problems. Does South Africa have a similar unemployment problem? We have an official unemployment rate of 25%. Um, this official rate uh, considers people who are growing subsistence vegetable gardens to be employed, people who are begging to be employed, people who are doing sex work for survival to be employed. So when you look at the real um, un um, unemployment rate, it's, it's sitting on closer to 35%. We have something like six or seven million people in the informal sector. Um, there's a very heavy casualization of work. So where um, uh, companies uh, outsource their employment, they're no longer employing people directly but they're relying on labour brokers, something like 30% of, of workers are employed through labour brokers. So you, you're dealing with job losses and, and, and this, is, this is continuing. You're also dealing with uh, insecure work, casual work, um, poor working conditions and, and endless, endless uh, struggles for good wages, you know, living wages. We're here at the Durban Climate Change Talks. Uh, 20,000 people from all over the world have descended on your country uh, to engage in very complicated negotiations of all different sorts. Uh, as a South African, what's your perspective on everything that's going on here? I think certainly from the One Million Climate Jobs campaign, we, we, we want to pressure our government to make commitments to emissions reductions. We're responsible for 1% of the, of the world's um, emissions. Doesn't, doesn't sound like a lot, um, but we have very high development needs. Um, that, that one, you know, those emissions um, are because um, of, of industries that benefit very few people. For us to, to develop, to have um, clean energy, to have good transport, to have good housing for all South Africans, our emissions are going to increase. Um, and, and this is what makes it incredibly important for us to, to reduce um, emissions that, um, that are not aiding um, or that come from activities that do not aid development. So uh, I think for the campaign, what we want to see is our government uh, making strong commitments and also leading the way. We, we have um, very clear um, opportunities for reducing emissions, for um, providing basic services to all people. Um, I mean, it really is a no-brainer. <laughs> Um, and and this, is, this is where our focus will be. How do you feel about the South African government's role in leading these talks? I know the host country is always very important in, in guiding the, the talks at these negotiations. Do you feel like uh, the South African government is, uh, has been doing a good job in the lead up to these talks and setting a good environment? I'm not going to answer that one. Because <laughs> no, I don't think so. <laughs> Fair enough, but I suppose we'll have uh, two weeks to see how everything progresses. Well, uh, I'm not sure that anybody's expecting much progress at COP17, sadly. Um, I mean, I see the, 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 the negotiations at the moment as, as sort of this, you know, this old person hunched over a, a walking stick and, you know, barely, you know, just sort of hobbling along. And, and this is what I see the negotiations as, and everybody here is exhausted. And we've been going through the same ground for, for years now. And, um, I mean, Copenhagen was, was really where where it hit us that, that we're, well, we're not making progress. Um, uh, nobody's really expecting progress at COP, uh, at COP17 in Durban, which is, which is really frightening. But at the same time, I think, hey, maybe, maybe here's an opportunity for a shake-up. Maybe something dramatic could happen here. So you haven't given up all hope? Uh, you can't. We're talking about massive global um, systems change. It's got to happen. Is there an alternative process that would be better? I think there needs to be a lot more involvement um, of civil society groups. I don't think governments listen to civil society groups um, well enough. How can civil society groups make their voice heard? I really think it's more about government opening up, that there must be a closer working relationship between government and civil society. I mean, civil society generally is always way ahead um, and, and, and government has to balance a whole range of concerns, understandably, but 
that this is really a point at which we have to start listening. Um, we have to make these shifts. We've, we, we really have run out of time. We're, we're seeing climate change already. Um, you know, the, the indications are that we're going to see catastrophic climate change. Um, it, it, you know, it, it is very much doom and gloom. And, and you know, unless we, you know, unless we just <laughs> stop emissions right now, and, and even then, it's 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 you know, it's dicey. We might still have catastrophic change. Something's just got to happen. Rohana Dada, thank you very much. Thank you very much.